In those times and with those prevailing attitudes, adoption was believed to offer the perfect solution, a clean break, a chance for a fresh start. It was considered to be in the best interests of everyone. But the problem was that this policy ignored the fundamental bond between mother and child and the lifelong trauma caused when that bond is prematurely and brutally severed. In the lead up to today's apology, the Minister for Family and Community Services, the Honourable Prue Goward MP, met with many mothers, fathers and people adopted as children to hear their personal accounts of how the experience <coughs> of adoption had affected their lives. They were heartbreaking stories of loss and grief. These deeply personal and moving recollections reinforced the Senate Committee's conclusion that forced adoption practices were wide-ranging and common. One mother told of being lied to about the death of her baby and of the torment of living with the lie until she finally learned, years later, that her son in fact was alive. Other mothers spoke of being drugged and sedated to impair both their judgment and their memories of giving birth, and they recounted other dehumanising treatment. An adopted <coughs> man told of uncovering a desperate and anguished letter from his mother sent to authorities pleading for her son to be returned to her. A father spoke movingly of the disenfranchisement of his fatherhood as authorities steadfastly ignored his wishes to parent his child. All felt that their basic humanity had been violated, trampled and ignored. Some women felt that they had been coerced into giving consent and that their right to refuse or revoke consent was deliberately concealed from them. Although no two experiences were the same, they all shared a single claim. All were extremely vulnerable and in great need when they were denied the care and support that they deserved. As a parent, I find it almost impossible to comprehend the pain caused by such treatment. And equally incomprehensible is the resilience of those who lived and continue to live with the wounds inflicted. For some, it remains a constant struggle. We know that others have succumbed and will never know of this apology. One woman described to Prue Goward the ice in her chest and her battle with feelings of pathological grief. This heartfelt and honest testimony exp helps explain the trauma that was experienced as a result of these past practices and why this apology is owed to those who suffered. Publicly acknowledging these terrible wrongs and their tragic consequences is, imp is important, but acknowledgement is not enough. Today, on behalf of the people of this state, the Parliament of New South Wales expresses its sorrow and remorse for the lasting damage that these past practices caused to the lives of so many. We are sorry that you've had to wait so long for this apology. We know that you live with the consequences of those practices every day. We are sorry for the forced adoption practices that severed the fundamental life-giving bonds between mother and her child. We apologise to the mothers who were not asked or listened to and who were never given a choice about the future of their children. And we apologise for making you feel ashamed and unfit to care for your babies. We say sorry for treating you cruelly and insensitively when what you needed most and deserved was care and support. To the women who have carried the pain of loss, grief and separation through their lives, we say sorry. We apologise to the people forcibly adopt, adopted as children for taking them from their mothers at the moment of their birth. You grew up never knowing the truth of your birth or how much you were wanted and loved by your mothers, and for that we also say sorry. We apologise to the fathers whose wishes were ignored and who were excluded from any arrangements for their children's future. Many fathers were carelessly written out of the lives of their children, and for that we are also very sorry. We apologise to the families who suffered as a result of forced adoption practices. We are sorry you were denied the opportunity to build the loving and lasting relationships with the brother, the sister, the niece, nephew or grandchild you were never allowed to know. We recognise the partners and children who have watched loved ones struggle with the traumatic effects of these adoption practices, often without knowing or understanding the gravity of past wrongs. 
To those whose relationships suffered as a result of these practices of the past, we say sorry. Mr President, we know that saying sorry can never change what has happened, but it is our great hope that this sincere and heartfelt public apology will offer healing and comfort to those who have suffered because of the practices of the past. For many, this apology will rekindle sad and unsettling memories and stir deep longings for resolution and peace. But hopefully, and helpfully, this apology may also bring a liberating sense of release from the shame and secrecy of the past. We hope that all those who receive this apology, whether present or not, can feel assured that finally we understand the silent struggle that you have endured. Today and into the future, we honour your strength and your resilience and your determination for the truth to be revealed in the hope that such injustices never happen again. A striking feature of many of the mothers who have spoken out about the past adoption practices is that above anything they seek for themselves from this formal apology, they wanted solace for the children taken from them. They wanted their adult children to know that they were loved and not abandoned. We hope that this apology helps adopted people make that journey. Nothing today is critical of adopted parents who are committed to the well-being of their children. This apology is focused on what this, year, this Parliament's Year 2000 inquiry called the unethical and unlawful practice of forced adoptions and its impact upon those involved. Today, more than in mere words, we want mothers, fathers and those who were adopted and their families to know through concrete measures that we are sincere about redressing the wrongs of the past. Many people affected by adoption have spoken about the excessive costs they occur, incur as part of their search for their family. To help lessen financial barriers to, to family reunion, the Department of Family and Community Services will waive the fees it charges for the authority a parent or adopted person needs to obtain their adoption information from other state government departments. We also know that today's apology may raise buried or unresolved feelings of grief, loss and trauma for many people affected by forced adoption practices. The Post Adoption Resource Centre has been offering information, counselling and other support services to people affected by adoption since 1991. We will increase funding to this valuable service with a particular focus on the delivery of services to those in rural and regional areas who are affected by past forced adoption practices. I'd like to express my gratitude to the men and women who have shared their deeply personal experiences, whether in writing or in person, with the Premier, Minister Goward and other members of Parliament. Your insights have been moving and invaluable. I also want to thank the many people who have travelled from across our state to be here today to receive this apology. I thank all of you for your generosity of spirit in listening to our words of regret, sorrow and remorse, words that are long overdue. And I hope your journey of recovery and healing is made easier by what you have heard here today.